So yeah. but anyway, the music business was a weird business, you know. I was in it I was in it for twenty five years, so I, I do remember the money and it was insane back in the seventies. You know, it was just crazy. You know. Cat Stevens you, you you made them for ten cents and sold them for twenty bucks. I mean it was just ridiculous. You know. That's what the studios were up to back then. And good luck to them, but there was just so much money, it was crazy. You know, they'd, they'd, I'd go to lunches in Las Vegas and there'd be uh, Los Lobos for breakfast playing. You know, and then Liza Minnelli would walk around at lunchtime and sit with you and then sing a few songs. And then dinner was Michael Jackson. It was just crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm talking crazy, man. And I don't remember who else there was. Alison Krauss for breakfast the next day and, and someone else and someone else. It just went on and on. One time we went to Disney World down in Florida. They booked the whole of Disney World out, yeah? And we were in there um, one night. All night could do what we wanted. Any ride. Wow. Yeah. I can tell you more stories, but that's another time. Do, but, do you see any of that ever coming back? Do you think we'll ever have another creative burst? Well, the, with the, I mean, we're on a powder keg, right? If the world is on a powder keg, but we don't seem to have that that draw to the i mean you find films you acquire films you show films yep. you're you're kind of yep. front and center to what we're talking about which is um you know you're seeing the culture and the art as it's coming out do you so i'll just ask you do you think that there is the same creativity that there was 30 years ago 20 years ago i think two things happen remember back then i mean we're talking about that cultural shift Mm -hmm. But I think that people also recognised that there was this opportunity to create this music. The management, the studios, the, whether they're independent or major, they both hum together at the same time. So you were in the band and I said, Heath, let's do it, man. I, I got a vibe. Do you love what you're doing, man? And we'd do it. I'd, I'd be organising bands and doing stuff like that. Of course that can happen again. Of course it can. We're going through this weird period again where it's probably not that happy, generally, but and that doesn't help, but I think it can happen again. Of course, it can happen again, and it could happen quickly. I don't know, you know. Yeah, Not we just jumped said. right in. We jumped right into it. I didn't mean to get so deep, so off the right off. No, the it's bat. okay. I'm happy to do it. I, you know, I think um, I think you're right. It's uh, but there's lots of good films made, and, and and lots of good creative people out there. And perhaps in this country, we're not nurturing them properly through uh, funding and things like that. But um, you know, people can still make great stuff. So, you know, I was involved in the Babadook as, a, as an exec producer. When I met Jennifer, she said, oh, I love Dario Argento. We rambled on for hours. Then she went and made the Babadook. So it can happen. That's for sure. You know, it just it just needs a, a few changes probably to get it more fertile than it is. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. That's I have my list of questions here. That's further down. But I did want to know what you think about the current theatrical in America, it seems like the studios have kind of a stranglehold on things. You have the huge blockbuster tentpole films, and then you have uh, mm -hmm. stuff that usually goes straight to Netflix or something like that. And if it does go to theaters, it's there for one weekend. I don't know what it's like in Australia. What no, it's very similar. Very similar. I think your, your problem is the older generation like me are worried about going back to uh, a closed environment. That will change. Because, as we know, we have to live with this crazy COVID thing. It's not going to go away. And I think they'll just slowly filter their way back. Even the football's not as well attended here as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So you say, but football's not as well attended. How can that be? But yeah. we're talking still about the same issue. And I think cinemas, from my perspective, um, and maybe this is a bit tough on the cinemas, but I think everyone has to change. I think what you're offering for cinema if you're going to pay an out here, it's 20 bucks to get to the cinema to buy a ticket, um, or 15 on a Tuesday, or whatever it may be, or 10, but it's still not cheap. So you have to create an experience that you want to follow up and you want it to attend. Now, there is no replacement of the dark room in my head. You cannot replace it. Watch all the TV you like, it won't matter. But I still think there has to be something. And not just turning up, paying 20 bucks, buying your chock top and going home and popcorn or whatever. It has to enhance that experience a bit more for people to say, I will get off my bum and not watch Netflix anymore. And that move has to be made by, I'm not sure, I'm sure that, you know, for oldies, it's got to be a glass of wine and it's got to be an atmosphere that they can be social in. It has to be somewhere they can be social. 
food, eating, because that we never stop liking that stuff and, and that environment. And so the cinemas have to invest really in that thought. And maybe they're not right now. That's another problem. And the ones that are probably are finding it's coming back. In terms of the studios, well, they're all about recreating something that was in the past, whether it's Marvel or Ninja Turtles or Top Gun. They're, that's their mantra. And hell, why not? If they can drag people in. And the cinemas are going to lust for it because that's money given straight away. You're going to get Spider-Man will fill the room. So the problem we have as an independent is, am I going to get space? And if I am, am I going to last more than a weekend? So that you're right, that is the headache currently. And I think uh, it's just got to be given time and we've got to make fantastic films, not good ones, fantastic films that have an edge that people will want to go and see. And I'm not discounting young or old, old people want to go and see. And so it will happen, um, but I think it'll take a bit more time. That's all. And we've got an election here in the next few weeks, so that's disaster immediately. You bring up elections, everyone just goes, <laughs> sit still, you know? So, because um, it's compulsory to vote in Australia. You have to vote, whether you want to go across it or not. But um, yeah. you have to. So it really flattens the country a bit. But we're much the same as you in terms of this attitude, mm -hmm. what's happening in the world, and this really quite disconcerting going on at the moment so it's already you know if you sense it something has to change and will is my suspicion while everything is kind of in flux in the whole world right now uh pandemic I, the the bushfires in australia those were crazy too um during this period where things are quarantine it seems to me like umbrella entertainment especially the whole media division just went to the next level i think in the last 12 to 18 months from my observation, you guys just clicked into a whole other gear. Uh, yeah. The Ozploitation Classics line, uh, all the different labels that have come out. Uh, I mean, there was already an Ozploitation Classics line, right? Sure. But the Blu-ray, sure. yeah, you know, tell me a little well, bit. Well, about... in, in all business, you, you have to have your headlights on. It's a road you travel down, but there are holes on it everywhere. And I think what's really important is to recognize what direction you're taking, have a plan, be clear about the plan, not be able to not change the plan, but be at least have your headlights on and see where you're going. It's wonderful being a pioneer, but it's a deep, dark hole. So maybe second's best. I don't know. My experience might tell me that. But I think we recognise that uh, with all of the platforms, it wasn't that simple to just put out a DVD anymore, but really to make it uh, collectible for the marketplace. We knew our audience. We knew... We're not selling Top Gun, so we had to appeal to our audience in a more civilised way and recognise their interests, and that's what we've tried to do. So, yeah, that was really pretty much the, the sum of it. And um, uh, I've worked with Mark Hartley since he made Not Quite Hollywood, in fact, well before that. And uh, we had this cachet of Aussie films, which we've got a lot coming as well, to do the exploitation and also um, to sell a lot of those rights around the world because we own a lot of the rights for those films as well. And I've been working with old producers like Bruce Beresford and Fred Skepsi and a litany of the Aussie guys uh, who are a little bit older than me, but much the same ilk. And we get on familiarly uh, and uh, they've trusted me to manage their films for them, which is what I've been doing for 20 odd years. So that continues. And unfortunately, a lot of them getting older and as in your country and probably falling off the tree as we call it. And um, the... Um, it's a bit sad that I'm even making more inroads to pick up more and more films from before they pass because I want their input. And what I like about doing it, Keith, is that uh, I have connection with them. They can trust me about delivering a 4K for them. Uh, we do all the extras. Mark's still very involved in that. Is another guy is Ben Helwig uh, from Monster helps me out a lot. Aaron, another guy who helps me out a lot. And they're they're the nerds. You know, we're all nerds. Let's be honest. So, um, and we love this. Um, they're built in with what we're talking about. So they understand our language. And we're really making best effort around our auspitation of that Beyond Genres label and all the other labels we're working on at the moment is what we want to present to people in a physical sense. And we also know that the DVD market's changed dramatically. The Netflix syndrome, again, has forced us to watch things on the couch. And even though last year was a pretty strong year for physical, you get to this year where um, the COVID has sort of settled them down and they've 
support five five Netflixes on there and they're sitting there not buying physical like they used to. So the presentation has to be more in favour of what they want rather than just delivering good to people. Yes. And I think that concept is true overall for selling anything. I'm not just talking about physical media or whatever. I'm talking about the concept of value add. I believe that if you're going to be in the market wanting to sell something in this current market because we all work so quickly and we have communication like you and I are talking about. You have to present the customer with some value that in some way for them to go, hmm, they're good. I got it. I get it. And the response and the, and the speed of delivery and all these other things are this value add. You have to present it to make it work. And it's not easy, but business never was easy to be successful. And you just got to pursue it with passion and you'll get there. Well, one of the things that you're doing that I love is uh, these added, well, it's the value added stuff that you're talking about, but there are discs yeah. that are coming with CD soundtracks. Yeah. The, uh, the Daybill posters are amazing. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, the lobby cards, I love the lobby cards. I wanted to ask you about the air fresheners. That's such a unique, I can't think of anybody else that's throwing air fresheners into DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, you can't blame me for that one. That was more Ari and uh, Max at the office. Uh, they're coming up with all sorts of weird and wonderful ideas to value add through the website. Hey, I can refer you to them for the details. Yeah, okay. okay. And if, uh, that wasn't me. Um, I'm more the content. They're more the value add stuff. But I, I'm not just talking value add in the DVDs. And I know where you're, the Blu-rays, where you're coming from. I'm talking about the whole concept, whether it's air fresheners, whether it's the way we do things, whether we we present things, everything. It's, it's all part of the package. It's got to be a global sort of strategic thinking that we've got about it. And it's, so it's, it's, it's certainly what we're trying to do. You, you mentioned that you have global distribution rights for some of these things. And I'm looking at the, I just want to read some of these off. The Ausploitation Classics range, uh, Beyond Genres, Sunburnt Screens, World Cinema, Films of Fury, which I want to talk to you about that a little bit more. And uh, now Sensual Cinema is uh, a newer uh, yeah. line. When you pick up these things or when you put these things out, are you thinking, um, you know, so many of the time they have ABC on the back of them for, you know, region unlocked for any, anywhere in the world. Are you thinking about the global, sounds like you are, you're thinking about the global marketplace for these things and not just the Australia, New Zealand um, area. Um, obviously, we want to give Aussies a chance to buy the Aussie films first. So we do give a hold back for that. But in principle, look, the ABC thing is really about giving opportunity for anyone to watch them because although we may want to sell the rights we may not and obviously through physical um, we also treat physical very different to platforms and uh, television and things like that so we're quite respectful about physical in a very different way to how we sell rights around the world we often exclude the physical uh, to people with the physical to people who buy from us directly that's certainly part of the plan not to just send them out there although recently uh, indicated in a Mad, Mad, Mad Dog Morgan box set that was incredible, you know, as you know. Yeah. So we do we do a mixture of things, but it's not, yep, we sit down and we consult each other and talk about it to not try and make our fans go, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's What cool. I get a lot of feedback on from the Australian and New Zealand viewers is they're yeah. loving the, um, the, the universal movies and the classic, I'm talking about like the, the monster yeah. movies and the Humphrey Bogart movies. Like they're loving yeah. that stuff because from what I understand, that's been very hard for them to get access to over the years. So you're meeting a need there in that market. And we've got a lot of retro sci-fi and retro horror coming yes. up, all, all planned in the next few months for sure. But I'll take that on board. But just some examples of Aussie films we've got coming, uh, which we haven't started yet, but we're in the midst of starting on. But there's a few more mainstream ones that uh, it's called Spotswood, which is the efficiency expert over your way, which was uh, Anthony Hopkins, Russell Crowe, Ben Mendelsohn film shot in Melbourne. Uh, we've got Midnight Spares, the exploitation film coming up soon as well, which has never been seen before. Um, We've got Inner the Damned and Night of Fear, the horror films that were done early as well. We've got Mark working on those currently. Um, what other stuff have they got? Uh, um, Money Movers, the Bruce Beresford film with Brian Brown and Tony Bonner. That's coming up very shortly with one of our comics in it again. So uh, that should be a lot of fun in the next couple of months. Uh, Sons of Steel, I don't know if you've heard of that film. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy 
rock and roll sort of menagerie film. It's really interesting. Yeah. So that's coming up a bit later in the year as well. So Thank lots you. of Aussie stuff coming for both, both Ozploitation and so, uh, some of those screens as well. I love that's stunt rock and all that stuff. That stuff's fantastic. <laughs> so that's, yeah, keep it coming. Yeah, no, we will. Brian, uh, Brian keeps talking to me about making a new movie with him, but maybe one day we will. I hope so. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Um, on the films of fury, uh, topic, can you tell, they've been Bruce Lee movies so far. Will it continue after the Bruce Lee movies? Yep, we've got a whole series of Jackie Chan films. We're probably going to put together in a box set. Um, the plan might be to change the frame around it. And we're thinking about it. It might be a bit cumbersome with that frame. And I know how much people like just a clean image on the front cover. So we're thinking about reorganizing that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming. That's again more an Ari and Max sort of thought, but um, gotcha. that's more their domain. But you know, lots of stuff coming, believe me. That okay. We're working on already. Um, some other things we've got coming. I know on the Beyond Genres, we've got Martyrs coming as well as uh, I'm working on Reaper Man at the moment. So, um, but one of the things I want is the soundtrack between you and me. That's the one I'm after. That's the missing piece of Reaper. Not the Blu-ray, but the, the soundtrack. Yeah, so because we're working on that. Um, what other things have we got coming? No, lots of stuff. I keep thinking the Hammer Box sets, we're going to continue that line as well with a whole lot of retro horror Hammer stuff in there that hasn't been seen before. Um, there's a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. What, what but, gets you excited? Is, and you're like, what are you most excited about right now that you see coming down the line? Mm, well, it's a matter of really, for us, getting a lot of telecine work done. So I'm in the midst of sort of doing the transfers with a whole lot of people on, on a lot of Aussie films. That's the stuff. That's my area specifically, taking the old classics and restoring them to some of the screens or exploitation. And the, the other guys tend to work on the Beyond Genres and the other titles as well, although I'm pretty knowledgeable in the, uh, in the, uh, in the sexy stuff as well. So I know where to go on. So it's a group. It's not just me. Yeah. <laughs> you could have said it was just you because it's just me. I'm in there 24 hours a day. Yeah. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Do you notice uh, this is totally, uh, I don't even know if I should bring this up, but maybe I, if I don't like it, I can cut it out. The, there are so many uh, restorations that are happening right now, and I haven't noticed any with you guys, but worldwide, there are a lot of restorations that are happening that have errors in them. They'll have dropped video or repeated you know there, there's an error release that just came out recently and uh there's about 12 seconds of footage that gets repeated right after you know is that a concern i don't even know how these things happen but people ask me about it a lot and i don't know what to say other than that people are doing their best uh i would i'm, I'm sure arrow would mean for that to happen but um, yeah i guess you've got to look at the qc process because they're not a cheap thing to do to restore a film from an internet or enterprise. And uh, nevertheless, you still have to apply yourself on all the processes to get it right. And if you don't, you've got a real headache because we're talking about the fans. and We know how important the fans are. And as we said to each other, we're both nerds and you and I are going to be bitterly disappointed if it doesn't work. So um, you need to be pretty conscious of that QC process. That's all I could say. And we are, and yes, we make mistakes as well, but um, I guess we're, we in the end are only human. That's all you can say, but uh, you, you got to get your process right. So we try. We work with a very good company up in Canberra, uh, which is somewhere between Melbourne and Sydney. It's the capital of Australia, but no one ever knows that. But um, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a great guy. He's very thorough. So we're very happy with him, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Where do you see things going in the next three three years? Let's just say three years. Theatrical. We've we've kind of covered theatrical, but for the whole media market, do you think it's going to continue to kind of uh, contract into more of a niche collector focused thing, or do you? Where do you see it going? I think your oldies are going to get very old. Probably abandoned buying old westerns, probably at some stage, but they will continue with their war and westerns for a long time and their interest in film noir and all the stuff you talked about earlier um, but I think um, look we all said the record business was dead 
I mean, there was a time there in 2000 where it was over. It was kaput, whether you sold a CD or an LP, and look at it now. So, you know, I speak to my record, old record shop friends and they're, they're having a great time again. So it's back. It's definitely back. Is it back in the same way I was talking about the 70s? No, of course not. Is it certainly back that you could run a business and make some money? Yeah, absolutely. And if a fan's passionate? Absolutely. So all the ingredients are back at a smaller level. And as a business, we, we will we'll keep endorsing that till there's absolutely no road left to cover. But um, I, obviously, who can predict what's going to happen in three years? But I still suspect there'll be fans that want physical content. Mm-hmm. What? Look at your wall, man. It looks fantastic. <laughs> Well, let me also say thank you for those westerns. They may be old these, but I you're putting out westerns for the Six Shooter Classics line that are yeah. they're not available anywhere else. I mean, it's just you guys finding those things. Are they are those old movies any easier or more challenging to acquire than some of the stuff that you know some of the more mainstream it's, things? It's digging. It's basically digging. That's all. You know, we're just uncovering the soil. Going, oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. So there's some pretty big catalogs out there, and we can dig it. Yeah. So I think, look, I, I think um, in every business, um, you've got to be able to adapt and move and change, and, and we will. And it would be a very sad day in my head if physical stuff. Very sad day. Um, I don't think it will, and we'll continue it in the path we can obviously recognise where it's going, and uh, that's the best we can possibly do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. As long as we can deliver the film to someone somewhere, That'll be important for us. Yeah. Yeah. As we wind down, I'm curious if there are any films. This is actually a question from uh, from Eric, one of my viewers. He wanted to know if there's any Australian or New Zealand films that you feel like people in America should know a little bit better. That's a good question. Well, we're going to bring it back like Midnight Spares is one that you should know about. There's a lot of them, actually, that are buried here with producers all over the place. We're going to bring them back out for sure. Uh, Mark and I are working pretty furiously, as I said, because some of these producers are getting on and that concerns us a bit because we need their involvement in the projects. And uh, yeah, I think I, I can put a list together for you and, and tell you what we've got, but we've got some real on board city there that we want to fix up at the moment that no one's ever seen. So we'll, we'll do that specifically. Let me get you a list. Let me talk to Mark and we'll put some ideas for you. Okay. Um, I, that's pretty much all that I had. How can I, how can we, the people that are watching this, because this is going to go up for my YouTube audience. Uh, how can we support what you're doing, support the Umbrella Company? Tell us what we can do. Uh, I want you to be happy that we're doing what we're doing and give us feedback on titles for sure that are missing because, you know, I'm only a couple of people like Mark and I and, and the others looking at things and perhaps we just, oh, I never thought of that one. I completely forgot. And anything that you might think might be interesting to add on or any comment really about what we're doing, all of it is customer feedback that we take on board. So that's what's really important to us. We want to know we're doing the right thing for everyone. And if we're not, or give us direction on how we should do things, we're happy to hear. We're not excluding anything. Yeah. That's great. Is there anything else that you want to talk about before I let you go? Anything you want to promote or the no, floor is yours? No, 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 no. Just check out the site. We're making more air fresheners and lots of other things coming. So you can hang them in your car. But uh, no, we're happy. And Heath, it's great to talk to you. I'm really pleased that you're another enthusiastic uh, filmy and uh, music guy because that's always great to know. But um, the world's much closer with people like us around. That's the point. Yeah. Let me just turn off that crazy phone of mine. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's lots of us out there and um, we're as passionate as everyone else in the world about what we're doing and we couldn't be more happy to be doing it as well. Well, sir, I appreciate it. Go. I'm sorry, go ahead. Thrilled to talk to you. Thanks for having the time. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Uh, This has been a real thrill and I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate the preservation and curation that is being done by umbrella uh not just on disc but also the, the things that you're finding for theatrical distribution um mm-hmm. it is noticed and appreciated so thank you very much my pleasure great to talk to you all okay. the best well Cheers. i'll talk to you later thank you sir thanks bye okay. have a great day bye-bye